episode number 111. You can get all the show notes and resources at deadhackers.us slash 111. What's up, Dad Hackers? My name is Patrick Antonucci, and I am the host and founder of this podcast and community of Dad Hackers. Dad Hackers is a community of Christian fathers who are devoted to encouraging, equipping, and enabling one another to become the men that God has created and called us to be so that we can raise up the next generation of fully devoted followers of Christ and leave a legacy of multi-generational faithfulness. Now, on this show, we primarily interview Christian men to dive deep into their experiences and insights insights into what it means to be a Christian man, a Christian husband, a Christian father, and a Christian leader. We ask questions that dig deep into the thinking and rationale and experiences of these men so that we can all learn and grow into the men that God is calling us to be. I'm so thankful that you've joined us today. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss any of our value-packed episodes. Also, please make sure you leave an honest review if you're listening to this in iTunes or any other platform that takes reviews. Reviews boost the show's ratings, which means that more dads are going to come across our show and benefit from the content that we put out. I also wanted to let you know that we do have a free private Facebook group just for Christian dads. So after the show, make sure you hop on over to the show notes. There's a link for that in there as well. All right, what's going on, brother? Wanted to talk with you today about several things that I've noticed in speaking with a lot of men and getting some feedback from them and noticing some common themes between uh, many of the men that I speak with and a lot of the interactions that I've had um, while doing everything that I do with dad hackers. So I wanted to talk with you about these things to perhaps provide some encouragement, provide some context for your life, and to just open your eyes to the fact that you're not the only one. And that is one of the things that has come up time and time again when I talk with men is feelings of isolation. Not that they are physically isolated from other men, though that may be the case for a lot of guys. But the common, one of the common themes that I've come to realize is that a lot of men feel isolated in the challenges, in the problems, in the issues, in the struggles that they have. So I want to speak to that. The second thing that comes up a lot is this negative storyline that we have begun to accept in our minds. A lot of men struggle with that, so we'll, we'll hit on that. And then the third thing is, I don't know how to categorize this one, but it's this idea of a lack of focus, uh, being easily distracted, uh, not acting and taking action in an area where you know you should and you know the actions that you need to take, but for whatever reason, you're not taking them. So those, those are the three areas, and I'm going to kind of break down some of those, break down those areas and speak to those and hopefully give you some maybe resources, ideas, directions to go for those. So hopefully this is, is helpful to you. If it is, let me know. I mean, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram. I'm active there. You know that. If you're in our private Facebook group, uh, just for, for dad hackers, uh, th that's free. If you're not in there, search it on, on Facebook or go to dadhackers.us. There's a link for it there. And make sure you get in that group. We have a lot of high quality dudes in there. Uh, and, and that's free. And that's a good way to connect with other men, which is one of the things that we're going to be talking about. So let's go ahead and jump in. As I've hinted before, the first thing I want to talk about is this idea of feeling isolated. Not that you're physically isolated, though you may be, but that you have this sense that you are the only one that struggles with the struggles that you have, that faces the issues that you have to face, that has the challenges that you have. And I want to relieve you of that burden from the perspective of that you actually are not alone, that many of the challenges and issues and struggles that you 
face on a day-to-day basis, whether they be actual physical manifestations of challenges or mental or emotional or psychological or spiritual challenges, I want you to know that from the men that I've talked to and in the data that I've kind of gathered, that these issues are very common among all men. And I think it's in part the devil in his tactics. Now, we can't blame everything on the devil. I I understand that. But I think one of the tactics he uses is to get men convinced and ashamed of the struggles and the challenges that they have, ashamed of those, and also feeling like they're the only ones that have those struggles, issues, and challenges. And therefore, they remain isolated because maybe you're, maybe you're ashamed of those or, or feel less manly because of these challenges, and it's hard to admit to another man, even your best friend. And therefore, we don't get healing in those areas, we don't get help in those areas, and it's harder to move forward in those areas for whatever reason. And I think this is in part, like I said, a tactic that the devil uses to render men less useful in the kingdom and in their families and in their churches and as leaders and in their community than they could be. God has inherently designed men to be leaders, to be action takers, to be risk takers. And if the devil, if Satan can influence us in a negative way to get us to not take action, to not lead, to to be stagnant, to not move forward, He doesn't have to get us to outright deny Christ and switch teams. I've said this a million times. He just has to get us to sit there and warm the bench, get us out of the game, so to speak. And and I think this is one that he leverages for his purposes. That being said, I do not believe that it's all the devil, (laughs) that we could just blame everything. The devil made me do it. Or in this case, I guess the devil made me not do it. because. We, as men, we are responsible and accountable for the actions that we take or that we don't take. And so, to a great degree, to remain in isolation is our own fault. But that's, I'm not trying to shame you out of isolation. What I'm trying to do is open your eyes and and raise your awareness level of the fact that a lot of that line of thinking is actually false. Many men, when you get into a serious conversation with them, struggle across the board with similar things. Uh, A lot of men struggle with lust and temptation in that area. A lot of men struggle in developing deep relationships with their wives. A lot of men, if you get them to be really, really, really honest, struggle with self-confidence. And a lot of men struggle with feelings of not being worthy enough or not being able to do what they're called to do. They struggle, self-confidence issues. A lot of men struggle with these things. A lot of men struggle in their relationships with their wives and with their children. A lot of men struggle to make deep relationships with other men. Now, I'm not talking being hugging and kissing and all, all that kind of crazy stuff uh, with, with other men, but I'm talking about a good solid band of brothers who can go to battle with you against these things. A lot of men struggle with those things. A lot of men struggle to deepen their relationship with God, struggle to get that devotional time in, struggle with their physical health, whether it be their nutrition plan or their activity. And the list could go on. I I could talk here for 45 minutes about the list of struggles. And what I want you to know is that you are not alone in that struggle. You are, you are most likely not, not 
the only one that struggles with the issues you struggle with. But again, we've got ourselves convinced that we are the only one who struggles with these struggles and that we should be ashamed of ourselves for having these types of struggles and that if we were to actually be open and honest with other people about these struggles to try to get some help, to try to get some accountability, to kind of to try to get some wisdom or direction or perspective or insight, that if we do that, then perhaps we would face rejection, perhaps we would be laughed out of town, so to speak, or look like a fool, which none of us want that, really. But the reality is, is that a lot of the things that you hunger for as a man and feel like you can't get, many other men hunger for those same things. And where, where a lot of this is coming from is I talk to a lot of guys who have interest in joining our Ironman Mastermind membership community. And when I talk with them, these themes come up again and again and again. And this is exactly the type of thing that we attack in our Iron Men community, is we are able to develop deep relationships with other men. Again, uh, not like sit around in a circle and hold each other's hands type thing, but a band of brothers is formed. A deep bond is forged between the men because we have a place, an environment where the culture is such that it's expected that every man there has an issue and has a challenge and has something in their life that they need to confront. And we're all there for the purpose of over overcoming those challenges, uh, of getting the wisdom and insight uh, from other men in those meetings. And so we come in with that knowledge. And with that as the baseline, we are able to really help each other on different levels. And I know there's other mastermind type groups out there and in some men's ministries are actually able to penetrate that barrier. And so there are options out there for you uh, and available to you. Even in our free group, the Ironman, or excuse me, the, the Dad Hackers Facebook group, men have gone in there with and put a post up there, just thrown it up there, and presented a question or an issue or a struggle or a challenge they're facing. And other men have gathered around them in, in the comments, of course, figuratively speaking, and have provided them support, encouragement, and insight. And I'm sure if you got in there, threw a post in there of something that you are struggling with, you'd get a lot of comments from other men who have experience in that same exact area. So th this, this whole concept of feeling isolated is really, is really false because you're not really alone in the struggles that you may face. You may feel alone, but your struggle is probably common to more men than you would think and probably a majority of men. So now I want to transition to the, the second thing. But before I say that, I, I mentioned about our Ironman community. And if you'd like to know more about that, go to dadhackers.us slash Ironman. Or if you're on your phone, just dadhackers.us, hit the three little bars to come down and then click on Ironman. And there, there's a page that has uh, all kinds of information, some testimonials from the guys that, that, have, that are in the group and a, a short, quick form that you could fill out that, that, um, that then I can follow up with you and we can have a discussion about you enrolling. So the second thing is uh, a negative storyline that you have in your mind. And again, I think the devil, Satan, likes to curate these kind of storylines in men's minds, but we can't just say the devil made me do it and throw our hands up and be like, well, you know, this is all the devil's fault. Because while I believe he has influence, he is not uh, all powerful as God is. And we still have free will to make our own decisions, for better or for worse. 
And so, you know, a, a lot of times these storylines that begin to develop in our minds and in our hearts developed over years and decades. Maybe it was a, a father wound or a mother wound that occurred in something that they spoke to you, like you'll never amount to anything. You're never going to be good enough. Oh, you can't do that. Um, and then that instills in your heart and mind a limiting self-belief. And then that just chips away at your confidence. And so what happens is if you could picture your mind as a bookcase and there's different stories written on these different books and you keep pulling the one book down that has this negative storyline uh, that you're not good enough, that you'll never amount to anything, that other people don't like you, that, that other, we should always be skeptical of other people or whatever the story is that you're reiterating in your mind. A lot of men struggle with that, feelings of self-doubt. And wherever the origin, it doesn't really matter where the origin of it came from. Like I said, it may have came from a mother, a father. It may have been a sibling, a teacher that berated you, bullying in school, uh, maybe even your spouse who over years has instilled negativity into you uh, by their comments and things like that. It doesn't really matter how it started. It's the, the fact of the matter is that now this storyline keeps running through your mind. You keep pulling that same book off the shelf and reading that same story to yourself, particularly when you get in challenging situations, perhaps whenever you have to have to confront somebody about something or you have to go through a challenging event or any of those kind of things where you have to, where you are called to, to kind of step up a little bit into your role as leader and protector and provider of your family. You sometimes get intimidated because of this negative storyline or you're, you feel like you're being held back from moving forward in life and really fulfilling your calling in life that God, God has called you to as a, as a husband or as a father, as a leader in your home, your church, your community, whatever. And this negative storyline in your mind is holding you back. I want to encourage you to challenge that storyline. And let me throw a disclaimer out there. All three of these things I struggle with. I'm not talking to you as one who has overcome all three of these areas. I struggle with them. I've made progress, yes, and, and I've learned some things and I've talked to a, a lot of guys about these things. And I've, I've been noticing some common themes and some things that have helped. And so that's why I want to share these things with you. So I challenge you to challenge that negative storyline in your mind. And catch yourself in the process of thinking that negative storyline and, and think to yourself, maybe there's another way. <laughs> maybe it's not about being good enough, or maybe, maybe it's not about never amounting to anything. Because what, what I've noticed is that lots of times we run to others for acceptance and approval and validation. And maybe that never happened in your life, but we keep running to others for acceptance, approval, and validation. Just like, just like a child runs to their parent, their father or their mother. You know, my, my kids do this a lot. They'll, they'll build something or draw something or create something or Legos are real big in our house. You know, dad, check this, check this out. And it's really cool. They, they desire and crave that approval, that validation, and that acceptance. And I, th and I strongly believe that that craving never ceases. But as you become older and older and older, you begin to realize that that acceptance, approval, and validation isn't fulfilled by other people, by other men, uh, mankind, if you will, human beings. You may, get, you may get approval, you may get praise, you may get acceptance, you may get validation from other people, or you may not. 
But I, I, would, I would suspect that whether you did or you didn't, it really didn't fill the void in your heart the way you thought it would. So for example, if you are craving validation from other people and you're not getting that validation, I would suspect that if you did get that validation from other people, it still wouldn't fulfill that craving. I believe there is a desire in the hearts of men and women as well for acceptance and approval and validation that can only be found in our Heavenly Father. Let me go back to my illustration of a child running to their earthly father for acceptance, validation, and approval. So they go to them to get that approval from, from their parents. That relationship can be transferred to, or that illustration of that relationship can be transferred to the relationship between a man and his heavenly father. And this is hard for a lot of guys because they did not have a good functional relationship between themselves and their earthly father. So it's hard to understand what a good heavenly father is like in his validation and acceptance and approval. But, but know this, number one, in the creation account, Every day that God created something, he looked at it and said it was good. After he created man and woman, he looked at them and said it is very good. Different level of significance for humans, for you, versus the rest of creation. Second is that God gave his stamp of approval on you by creating you in his image. In other words, if, if you really think about that, that means that if God created you in his image, he has created you with intrinsic value and worth. Intrinsic value and worth. In other words, you are valuable and worth, full of worth, can't think of another word to say that, to God just by being, just by being. You get that? You have value and worth to God because he created you. You are his creation. Third thing is if we go to the New Testament, Gospel of John, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and so forth and so on. You probably know the verse because it's one of the most popular verses. But do you ever think about what that's saying? is that God loved you so much that he sent his only son to die as a sacrifice so that he could bring you back into a right relationship with him. That's the kind of value and worth that you have in the eyes of your creator. Jesus also talks about how we shouldn't fear men who are only... It, it, the ultimate man can only kill the body. They could torture you. It can make it very painful, very unpleasant. But another man from an eternal perspective cannot send you to hell or send you to heaven. And so Jesus encourages us to not, to not fear the one who can only kill the body, to fear man, but to fear God. Because he's the one that can, can throw uh, you into heaven or into hell. So from an ultimate eternal perspective, our real desire should be for God and to please him and to do work for him and to praise him and to glorify him. And guess what? You already have validation, acceptance, and approval in the eyes of God. And really, those are the eyes that really matter in your life. Those are the ones that really, really matter. And, and this is something that can be developed over a long period of time. Some people have an event in their lives where maybe some kind of experience where they really come to know the love of God on a deep level. And other people, it's maybe a longer gradual process that, that you have to work at. But challenge those 
negative storylines in your mind and replace them with the fact that God intentionally created you. He put his stamp of approval on you by making you in his image. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. And if you think about Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and he has work for you to do, assigned to you for you to do. So we need to get after that (laughs) and begin doing that work. So the third one that I wanted to cover. So just to reiterate, we've talked about uh, feelings of isolation. And number two, we talked about this negative storyline. And number three, this whole idea of lack of focus, being easily distracted, not acting on what you know you need to take action and you know how to take the action. You just aren't doing it. Uh, Lack of accountability. This is a very serious problem for a lot of men. And I don't have all the answers for you for that. First, I want you to know that you are not alone in that. You are not the only one that struggles with not being focused or being easily distracted or not taking action when you know you should and and you know the steps to take. So for example, a, a lot of, a lot of guys want to lose some weight. Well, you know, that basically boils down to eating right and your, your diet and exercise, essentially, you know, intellectually how to do it. It's just the accountability and and putting it in practice and the self-discipline is where things break down. And this is, this is a common problem among a lot of men. And I think this goes back to the first thing we talked about, feelings of isolation and not being connected with other men, because there is something magical, if you will, that happens when we connect to other men and we are challenged and we are held accountable and we are encouraged and we are confronted by other men. And I've done other episodes where I've talked about uh, developing a plan and taking action. I've talked about the, the list of critical tasks. I've talked about morning routines. And so I encourage you to go back and check out those episodes for some tips on how to live a more disciplined life. And again, another disclaimer, I am not the most super disciplined person out there. I, I fail on a regular basis. And, but I keep going. I keep moving forward. I keep tweaking. I continue to try to get better, surround myself with other men who are also trying to get better. One area that I think can really, really help you is with respect to commitments. I've talked about this from time to time, but I I really want to hit it hard right now and then wrap things up. And this is this idea of making commitments. And when we think of making commitments, often we think about making commitments from the perspective of commitments to other people. But I want to kind of open your eyes to the fact that you make commitments to yourself on a daily basis. I'm going to do this. When when I get home from work, I'm going to work out. Or I'm going to stick, stick to my nutrition plan today. Or I'm going to, whatever it is, I don't know, clean my car, (laughs) whatever it is. And we tell ourselves in our mind, I'm going to do this, that, or the other thing. And then we break that commitment that we've made to ourselves and don't follow through on it. So two things with that. Number one, be careful of the commitments that you make to yourself. It's one thing to like think about something and and make some plans, but if you've really committed to doing something and almost like you've given yourself your word and then you don't follow through on that, you begin to develop a track record with yourself of not following through on your commitments. And that spills into a whole host of other areas of your life. And so, 
I want to encourage you to be careful about the commitments that you make to yourself. Number two, take seriously the commitments that you make to yourself. So the, the, the hesitation may be, well, does this mean I shouldn't make any commitments to myself? Because if, if I'm just flippantly making commitments to myself and then breaking commitments, now I'm developing a track record of not keeping my word to myself, which is just self-defeating. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Consider carefully the commitments that you make to yourself and when you give yourself your word and take them very seriously and then begin to follow through on them. Carefully scrutinize and analyze the commitments that you're going to make to yourself and then begin to follow through on them. Take them seriously. And then as you do, you begin to develop a track record of following through on your commitments with yourself and keeping your word with yourself, which builds confidence. Of course, all three of these things, these three topics that I've talk, talked about should be bathed in prayer. You, you should be praying about all three of these areas um, and, and any of the challenges that you have. But pray, ask God to help you be the kind of man that keeps his commitments to himself, that follows through on his commitments, that is a man of his word to himself. And then that will begin to spill over into the other areas of your life. Do you have trouble being viewed as a trustworthy man by your wife, by your children, by those closest to you? Or are you seen as one who constantly commits to things and then, oh yeah, that's Patrick. He, you know, he says he's going to do it, but I don't, I don't really think he's going to do it. Or he's, he's definitely going to be late or he's definitely going to not be prepared for this or that. Keeping your commitment and keeping your word to yourself is very, very important. And then that therefore will, will build in you a track record of keeping commitments and spill over into the other areas of your life. Well, guys, we've got to wrap it up here. Hope that was helpful to you. Uh, if so, I, I ask that, that you let me know. Give me some feedback. Uh, if you like this, this type of thing where we, where we have this discussion on the, on the podcast here, uh, let, let me know. I'd like to do some more of these kinds of things. And if you found value in this, I ask that you share this with one other guy. And if you're looking for the show notes, you can go to dadhackers.us slash podcast. And um, all the podcasts are right there. If you're listening to this on iTunes, I ask that you go give us a, a quick rating and written review. It's very, very helpful. We're trying to up our reviews on there as well. And like I said earlier, if you want to get into either the free Facebook group, you can check that out. It's just Dad Hackers on Facebook. Um, you can search for it there or the links on the website. And if you want to check out the uh, Iron Man community, you can do that as well. All right, brothers, stay sharp. All right, gentlemen, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope our conversation was a blessing to you and that you leave this episode better equipped to be the man and the father God has called and created you to be. If so, then I ask that you please leave us a five-star rating and a quick written review in iTunes. Then make sure you head on over to the show notes to get all of the resources for this episode. While you're there, you can take part in our five days to be a better dad challenge, as well as get involved with our free Facebook community. All right, gentlemen, until next week, remember Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Stay sharp.